Good morning from SeaWorld Orlando. We are here today, number one, to ride roller coasters. I haven't ridden Icebreaker since the last time, since we went for the preview of it. I want to ride it again today. Also, a lot of other roller coasters that I like here, especially Mako, there is doing something at the front of the park. They keep calling it a landscaping project, but the rumors around, the rumors swirling are around that it is a new roller coaster that they started breaking ground on. I don't know, we're gonna have a look and see if we can see any like hints of that. Also, there's a food festival happening right now. So, it's gonna be a fantastic day. A lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to see. So let's head inside, SeaWorld Orlando. All right, right as soon as we walk in, there's a SeaWorld store right here. I'm gonna head inside and see if there's any fun merchandise. Maybe something for Jackson, maybe something retro for Jackson. Here's all of the kids stuff. I don't know, this one's kind of fun. This 2T is very small. Let's see. Flippin' awesome, turtly wicked, whaley cute, flippin' sweet. I like this one though, D's for dad. And then A is for awesome. Of course, M is for mommy. Ah, so here is all of the vintage stuff, but nothing for kids. Oh, they have limited edition dominoes. Jackson loves dominoes. Also, I like this cup. This cup is way cool. I remember cups like this from when I was younger. This is wild. There is a pharma box here. It's a vending machine where you can get sunscreen, toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, Advil, masks, COVID tests. It's kind of a lot of random stuff in here. Pads, hair gel, soap. You need some soap? So normally during festival times, there would be a walkway back here. Like take for instance, during uh, Spooktacular, there would be a walkway through here that you could go through and experience Spooktacular, but right now it's closed off and there's a big sign that says do not enter because they're doing something back there. They're doing, they're constructing something. We're gonna have a look from the bridge, see if we can see anything. But I did want to point out that right now, Seven Seas Food Festival runs through May 8th and it's select nights. That's just for the bands, I think. I'm gonna check and see if it's, if it's running right now, if the food booths are open right now, because it is Wednesday at like almost 11 o'clock. Hello Scream is back this year, September 9th through October 31st, select nights, as well as Hello Scream, or as long as, as well as Spooktacular, September 10th through October 31st. So we've got some spooky stuff coming out, but before that, of course, Electric Ocean running May 27th through September 5th. And then August 5th through September 5th is Craft Beer Festival weekends. Oh yeah, let's see, There's here's some of the chef's favorites for the food festival. Oh, it says Thursday through Saturday. Oh, so it's not happening today because today is Wednesday. So it looks like we're not gonna be trying any of the food today. Dang, could have had mini churro bites. Well, well, we'll definitely have to come back maybe next week or the week after on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So we're heading past Flamecraft Bar and we're gonna walk across this bridge because I'd like to head over towards Icebreaker. Man, I wanna ride Icebreaker today. And we're gonna see if we can see across the waterway to what they're working on over yonder. Oh, oh yeah, they are definitely doing something over there. They've taken out a lot of trees, a lot of plants, all of the booths, all the concrete. Wow, okay, so they're making a lot of room. So that's kind of leaning towards the idea that this could be a roller coaster, because roller coasters do need a big footprint, but then you can run paths underneath them, so maybe they could keep the festival path but just have the roller coaster going over top of it. This ought to be interesting because this area was a good spot to watch Electric Ocean from. So there, during Electric Ocean, there were fireworks every night of the festival. Ooh, icebreaker, yeah. So people would sit over here on the lawn and watch the fireworks. Now I don't know if they're gonna be able to do that during Electric Ocean, unless what they're doing, you can kind of see they've roped off a section here with some like two by fours. Maybe they are making a walkway and then maybe they'll build whatever they're building behind it. Or they're just building whatever they're gonna build. And like, it'll be a year or so without this being a fireworks area or this being a festival path. Cause there is still kind of a lot of park behind us here to have all the festival booths and things like that in. I think the interesting question will be is Spooktacular. So Spooktacular usually runs back over here, whereas Hello Scream was running sort of over on that side of the park. And I don't think they want to mix those two because they do set up scare zones for Hollow Scream with different uh, things that can be seen during the daytime, like different props that kids might not want to see. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. They could do Hollow Scream over there and then maybe like 
spooktacular over by Manta or something like that. Oh, this is interesting. There's a lot of fish right here. Wow, somebody must have been feeding them from over here because they're definitely like coming over looking for food. And these are natural fish here in Florida. These are uh, bluegills maybe? Actually, they kind of look like bass, don't they? Wow, they're big though for sure. See if I can catch this transfer track as they're moving over. When we did the preview of this, we talked about this a little bit in the video, how the track transfers over and then you launch backwards. And this is the part that Jen didn't think was going to happen. She's like, is it broken? I want to ride back row so I can get that real greater than vertical spike in. Doesn't look like it's very fast from here, but when you're on it, thing really whips, doesn't it? Side note, it feels like there is nobody in this park. So I was gonna buy Quick Q, and as we learned last time, if you're gonna buy Quick Q here at SeaWorld, always count the number of rides you're gonna ride. Because if you're only riding three rides, it's cheaper to buy them individually than it is to buy the day-long Quick Q pass, like the Quick Q Unlimited. So I think I'm gonna do individual Quick Q lines if the lines are long. They might not be. There's not a lot of people in the park today. If you guys are ever in Florida and you see a bush that looks like this with white flowers, smell those flowers. This is a gardenia and they are amazing. Oh, I like the specificness of this. They're like nine minute wait. Exactly nine minutes to ride Icebreaker. I did also want to point out that they changed the height requirement for this ride. It used to be guests must be 54 inches to ride alone and you could be 48 inches to ride with a 13 year old or higher, but they just made it so everybody has to be 54 inches. Let's do, ooh, okay, so it looks like they just changed the price. I think it used to be $8 to rent a locker all day. Now it looks like it's $10. So $2 for the first two hours or $10. If I'm gonna ride three rides today, I think I'm doing $2, right? Because that's only $6 compared to the 10. Okay, all right. It depends on what the wait times are everywhere though. All right, let's do this little math day. Oh, and also, Let's switch to the GoPro after we put our camera in the locker. Oh yeah, there's like barely anybody in line. I wonder if I should wait for the last row or the first row. Ooh, which one do I want to do? All right, here we go. Some bad lighting in here. All right, here we go. It's time for us to go. Hold on to your lap harness, face forward, and keep your back and head against the seat and headrest. All right. And get ready to break the ice. Well, we gotta break the ice. Oh yeah, we have to tell icebreaker jokes, right? Like, uh, you guys come here often? You having a good day? Enjoying? One thing I don't like about this coaster is you have to take off your sunglasses, so there's no loose articles on the roller coaster. Some of the other coasters will let me leave my sunglasses on, and I don't know what changed with this one, but they don't allow it, so. You guys ready to go backwards? Here we go. We. All right, I'm gonna turn it forward so you guys can get this spike. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Some real airtime right there. So we're gonna launch forward again, right? And we're gonna stall. Oh, all right. It's got some bunny hops in it. And then we're gonna go back up the spike, launching backwards. So, uh, whoa, all right. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's fun. That's a lot of airtime right there. Whoa, whoa. That's another launch. Up, oh, 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 goodness. Okay, it's gotta be facing me. Whoa, so much airtime. It's ridiculous. Okay, I understand now why they changed the height limit on this thing because there's no telling what seat the kid's gonna get in and there's so much ejection time on this. It's wild. Oh, wow, yeah. For, uh, for what we thought was gonna be, uh, for what we thought was gonna be like a transitional roller coaster between like say, Grover's and Mako, this coaster turned out that it kicks pretty hard. So I like it. Uh, one of my favorite rides and we did only wait like nine minutes even though I waited for the back row specifically I had to go through two different cycles that's what happened so sorry there's like a guy arguing with management over here about having to take his sunglasses off man icebreaker is good and it does it kicks hard for what they call the transitional roller coaster like this was supposed to be the stepping stone for kids going from Grover's to like Mako and I think that's why they had to raise the height limit was because it turned out to be it, it went, like went harder than they thought it was going to. Like it is a, a pretty intense roller coaster. It is short, but especially back row, you get major airtime. You get launched out of your seat at some of these little bunny hops. It's good. If you haven't been on it and you're a coaster like fan, highly suggest coming out here. You know what I think it's time for? I think it's time to go ride Mako.
Let's go see what the wait time is there. If it's long, we'll get a quick queue, put our stuff in the locker and go. Oh, I forgot about the flamingo boats. We should come out here and do the flamingo boats one time with Jackson. Oh, there's a spoonbill over here. Not a flamingo, but it is still pink. Okay, so the argument that I saw on Icebreaker about the guy being upset that he couldn't wear his sunglasses on Icebreaker brings up a good question and I'm gonna find out. If you have sunglasses and you have like the strap in the back, can you wear them? Like regular, you're not supposed to wear your regular glasses either, I don't think. So I'm gonna find out if that's the case. I think it's only Icebreaker that this sort of thing happens on. We're gonna go find out. And I think that that's because of the ejection airtime on Icebreaker. There's a lot of like vertical G's that could make your glasses like woo, you know? Oh, oh dang, I do wish that the food booths were open today because crispy Reuben egg roll sounds amazing. Also, a mini shepherd's pie sounds good too. Everything's new here. The glazed corned beef sounds delicious. So we're right across from Infinity Falls and there used to be this like game here where you could look into alligator heads, like stylized alligator heads. It was like a VR game. You can kind of see this is the, the like shape and structure of the alligator heads that were over here. And they are since gone. And there were two games over here. It was Reserve Ranger and Rush the River. Well gone. Over here at the Mediterranean market, they have hummus and garlic kettle chips, hummus with chili oil, and then right underneath it, there's a sign that says vegan option available. I wonder what makes it not vegan and what they do to it to make it vegan. Oh, nice. Only a 10 minute wait for Mako. All right, let's get a locker and head in. Nobody in line. So I feel like the 10 minutes is just how long it takes you to walk up to the top of the tower and get on the ride. All right, my favorite one. I'm gonna ride Mako. <laughs> I should point out that they did just repaint the bracket. Sharks, feeding frenzy. That's about all I know about happening on this side of the park is that they repainted Kraken. And it looks nice. I can see the airport from here. I don't even know if you guys can see it through that little hole right there. It's the airport. See all kinds of stuff. All right, here we go. Mako is so good, so I, I feel like I have a ranking right now. I feel like Mako is still my number one, Icebreaker is now my number two, then we're working into like Manta and Kraken. I feel like Manta and Kraken are just too old for me right now, like they they shake too much. Whereas like this Icebreaker especially, Icebreaker does have the ejections, but it is very smooth. Mako, super smooth. I'm excited to see, if they're building a roller coaster over there, I'm excited to see what it will be. I, 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 so far, I like their newer roller coasters. They're very good. Oh, if they built a wooden one over there? Like Iron Gwazi type? Mm, I don't think they would, but it'd be pretty awesome if they did. All right, so the idea was to get some food, but the, uh, the, the Seven Seas Food Festival is not happening today. So I'm gonna head around and see if I can find something to eat. So SeaWorld has some of the best food as far as theme park food goes. Like, I like their burgers here. Like, a regular theme park burger, I like SeaWorld's burgers the best out of any other, like, just regular old burgers at, like, Disney or Universal. So I'm sure we'll find something. So in my quest to find some food, I'm gonna pass through Sesame Street Land. Might as well check out the gift shops and see if there's anything for Jackson. He loves his Cookie Monster shirt that we got here. We might have gotten it at Busch Gardens, but he loves his Cookie Monster shirt, so I'm wondering if there's anything else that maybe he'll like. Maybe an Elmo shirt? He really likes the Cookie Monster, though, so. Might have to get the bigger size for when he outgrows the one that he has. Oh, I thought that Sesame Street land was gonna be packed. There's nobody in here. So the problem the problem with SeaWorld being less crowded right now is a lot of stuff closed right now. So like Twirl and Whirl is closed. 
and cookie drop is closed kind of looks like the roller coaster is not running maybe they're just waiting to load people up onto it they must have been waiting for a full train all right we're gonna check inside the laundromat and see if there are any shirts or anything for jackson oh this one's kind of fun super grover lovable fuzzy and blue jackson's cookie monster shirt is a little bit like it's like a dark blue this one's almost like tie-dye but i think these are just kid sizes no toddler sizes yeah they just got small medium large extra large oh this is kind of interesting they have sensory things like light up cubes that are water activated and they have light up sensory toys for sesame street like you can get julia so i've seen oh look at this the employee of the month this month is cookie monster but I've seen these before, like the gang's all here and everything I know I learned on the street. I've never seen these bottom two. The best address in New York City and 123 Sesame Street. Oh, this one's awesome. This Oscar the Grouch shirt is so cool. And this one says, can it? I'm gonna get this one. I like it a lot. And then rotten things down here. And counting things like Stranger Things themed shirts just wanted to make sure i just translated it this is what i thought it said but it says oscar oh yeah they have the smaller size for him i'm gonna get it for him a new cookie monster shirt speaking of cookie monster there he is he's meeting and greeting with families oh no he smelled the flowers and he got pollen all over his face now he's gonna have allergies oh there's a cookie monster one maybe i'll get the cookie monster one to wear it when jackson's wearing his cookie monster shirt so i think there's some like maybe some supply issues right now because the cookie monster shirt for adults is not available in my size it's only available in extra large and higher and then the cookie monster shirt for jackson is also not available in the size that i wanted i wanted to get 3t he's in 2t right now but he already has a cookie monster shirt that's 2t so i wanted to get 3t so when he outgrows the 2t he'll have a shirt oh the shamu show just let out so now there is a large group of people walking around the park so we're going to try to head over to the other side of the park and get something over there because i feel like the crowd might be less on that side of the park Maybe not though, it is like lunchtime, so I think everywhere is gonna be kind of crowded. Now we're gonna check and see what the wait time is here in Voyagers. Get some barbecue. Looks like, looks like I picked the wrong time to eat some lunch. It's a very busy day in here. So funny, because the rest of the park didn't seem busy at all, but there's a big long line here at the Smokehouse. Okay, I audibly gasped at the size of this compared to the price. This was $20.99 for this brisket and this like smattering of fries. Dang. Which is funny because these cookies for four cookies was $6. So, I mean, that's kind of expensive for cookies too, but it doesn't make me gasp like the brisket did. All right, so admittedly, the food did taste good. The brisket was a little bit dry, but we added some barbecue sauce to it and it tasted pretty nice. I just wish there was more of it for the price, especially. Eh, next time we'll be here, there'll be a food festival going on and we'll try some of that food. On the way out, there's a sign here that says, brews and bites available here, looking for a quick snack or beverage. In the artisan's hall? I'm gonna check in here and see what they're talking about. This is where you like buy Guy Harvey stuff. Oh, okay, so it's just this cooler here. You get Bud Light, Yingling, Mick Ultra, and they have like a turkey bacon club croissant. That sounds really good. Some mixed fruit and then a salad down here. Huh, who knew? And it's just kind of like inside of this housewares store where you can come and you can get like a thing that goes around your wine bottle. It looks like a guy fishing or like a, a wine bottle holder with a guy sitting on top of a couple of barrels fishing. Or like this guy is doing his taxes, I guess. All right, it's starting to rain, but what a great day that was. Like we got to ride two roller coasters, both now my favorite roller coasters in the park. We did have some like okay food. I wish we had been here for the food festival, but we will definitely be back. And we got to see some progress, like they're doing something over there. They're calling it a landscaping project, but we think, I'm kind of leaning towards the rumors being true that it's going to be a roller coaster because it's a lot of space. And we're gonna be checking back more and more to see what it looks like as it progresses. So stay tuned. I don't know, it was a great day. I had a really good time at SeaWorld. So also the crowd was super low, which is fantastic. So with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. Now it's time to pay the price. <laughs>